My button that shuts the garage door is not working. I feel another video coming on. Hey everybody, I'm Richard. Welcome back to a little bit of everything. I got a quick project down in the garage that I need to take care of. I thought maybe you might be interested in. Let's run down there and I'll show you what I'm up to. Okay, everyone. So in my garage, I have what I think is a rather unique situation. I have, in my garage, I have three overhead garage door openers. I have one there. I have one in the center, and as you can see with the light on, I have one over there at the end. Now, what's unique about these garage door openers is they were made by Stanley. Let me get on the side here so you can see. And Stanley stopped making garage door openers, um, I think it's in 2002, something along those lines. But all three of these are Stanley garage door openers. So what's kind of unique and interesting uh, with these three garage door openers, some of you may uh, have been on my channel in the past know that I don't own this property. I rent this. Um, my wife and I have been here about four years now um, when we decided that we were going to move. COVID hit and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we're still looking into that. But um, when we originally moved in here, uh, when we took possession of the house, a uh, couple days into it, we realized we didn't have garage door openers for the garage doors. Um, and we had kind of a unique setup here where um, there's a panel, and let me go show you that right now. There's a panel right here that has a button for each one of the doors, which very conveniently opens and closes them from inside the garage. And then at each door location, there's a button, an individual button, that um, will do the same thing. It will also open and close. This is the, the one we're gonna be talking about later. And then over here in the corner, there's a button over there, kind of a doorbell looking one. So the other thing that's kind of unique about living here in this, in this space with these old garage door openers, um, I didn't have a remote to get into the garage door. And there's no, um, even though we have the buttons on the inside, everything is set up to open the garage from the inside. Nothing was set up to open it from the outside. There's no keypad. These are pre-keypad, they're so old. Um, so long story short, I had to do some research and I found these, um, these little remotes online. Um, these work, they're kind of a um, uh, one-stop shop for several of these different older ones. And I'll show you here in just a second. When you grasp this on the end, you're supposed to be able to pop this little cap off here. And when you do that, you see there's a module on the inside right here, and there are 10, um, 10 little levers on this module. And how you program each one of these individually to your uh, opener is you put these in some kind of configuration and you see what the configuration is. Then this exact same module exists uh, within the um, garage door opener itself, and you go put it in the exact same configuration, and then this will open and close your garage door. And for any of those of you who have any, any of those who have nefarious thoughts about coming to my garage door and grabbing one of these and opening my garage, I'm going to reprogram this. Um, anyway, um, once you do that, then you can use these, these little garage door openers. I say little, they're actually kind of big. Um, you can use these then to open up your garage from the outside. And so we have, I bought several of these. I bought one for each one of our vehicles that I've programmed to one for her car and one for my car. And then I uh, bought uh, three of them actually, one for each one of the garage door openers to leave inside the house so that we can open up any one of the three garage doors from inside of the house. And uh, well here, I'll show you on the video what that looks like. You can see me grabbing the um, remote and I have to go outside. Don't always have to go outside. Sometimes you can make it work from the inside, but you see me, um, pointing it at the garage door and opening the garage door there. So anyway, we have to use these for that purpose uh, from inside of the house. Um, having said that, um, when I'm in the garage 
and I go to leave, um, I don't have one of these or I have one in my car. So I stand by the door and then I hit the button for the individual garage door on my way out. And as you can see, this one doesn't work. So it's kind of a pain having to have all these different remotes to do all these different tasks. Um, I can close the number one door over by the main panel, no problem. I can close the number three door by standing over there by that, closing it and jumping out of the door. It's not necessarily a safe thing to do, but it's really my only option unless I want to carry one of these around all day and I don't want to do that. So as you saw by the video, this one does not work. So I'm going to replace that today. But in the interim, um, you might say, Richard, that's two wires. Why make a video on replacing that stupid thing? Well, it's more about that than, um, it's more about just replacing that item. Uh, I kind of want to explain the whole wiring side. There might be people out here who don't understand low voltage wiring versus uh, the kind of wiring that's in your walls. I kind of want to just kind of walk through that really fast for anybody who might not completely and totally understand. And then I'll show you how this is wired and configured and, and I'll walk you through exactly what I'm going to be doing to fix it. So stand by, let's walk over to my bench and I'll show you the wiring that I got set up over there. So as you can see, I have two different stacks of wires here. Um, let's move this out of the way and I'll show you this. This is what's considered low voltage wiring. Uh, this does not need a transformer. It does not need um, uh, to be um, grounded, anything like that. This is just for conducting very, very low voltage of, uh, of electricity. And in the instance where I'm going to be installing the um, or replacing that uh, button over there, there's already low voltage wiring run to it. I just happen to have a big pile of this over here, so I kind of wanted to show you. If you can make it out, there's actually two, and I should have separated this. There's two wires here on a red and black, you'll just have to take my word for it. There's red and black and it's a small copper wire that runs through there. That's the exact type of wire that I'm gonna be using. You might see this on like a speaker or uh, even your under, a care, uh, under cabinet LED lighting has very low voltage wiring. It's different from this, but um, there are different types of low voltage wiring, but this is what I'm gonna be using in the garage today. What, what's different from that and what you have in your wall, so your, your um, switches and your plug-ins run on some type of wire like this. This is a three cable wire. It has the black, uh, the white, um, and a ground, a green wire. Um, this is, this particular one's called 14-2. Uh, there's, there's several different types. There's, you know, 15 amp, there's 20 amp that you use to, to run uh, your switches, 15 amp, your outlets, 20 amp. Uh, and different uh, size of this, but this this is a completely different size wire as you can see um, Let me bring this over here You Probably already got that in your head, but you can see there's obviously a big difference there between uh, The type of electricity that runs through this wire to operate all of your switches and lights in the house and this which was going to be operating a small little switch on my um, In my garage door, so let's go over there And I'm going to start taking that apart and showing you a little bit of what I'm going to be doing over there This is only going to take a few minutes uh, this is the actual switch that I bought. Um, I bought this online. Um, it's just a regular doorbell switch. It's got two connections on the back. Um, as you can see right there, it's got two connections on the back. It doesn't matter how you wire this. Um, so I'm going to be replacing that switch with this one so that I can open and close that door from inside again. So let me go over there and show you how I'm going to do that. So as I said, this is going to be a really, really simple task. As, as uh, I described, there's only two wires here. They're running down here. And this is a, a, it's an older wire. This wire runs all the way up the wall over there to the, um, to the garage door opener. It's got two screws on the back. And I'm just going to unscrew those. Okay. Now, uh, I will confess that I did go ahead and strip these back, and um, when I originally decided to make this video, I went ahead and stripped these two wires back uh, so there'd be some fresh wire on them, so I wasn't uh, reconnecting this to, a, uh, uh, to an old and brittle wire. So I'm gonna take this switch out, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it connected, and then we're gonna get it connected back to the wall show you there's two connections here so this just got to figure out what direction this screws so 
circle and unscrew it just a little. Make a loop with my screwdriver. Sorry, it's kind of hard. Let me pull this out just a little. Point, oops, wrong one. I don't know, like that. So that it, as it tightens, it'll tighten the wire down as well. Sorry, I'm not making this very easy to see, I know. But there's that one attached. I'm gonna attach the, the other one now. Oh, you got a little preliminary jump on me there. So, yeah, check this out. You should hear it now. That's going up. That's the door coming down. Great. Awesome, it works. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this thing screwed into the wall. Wall here, so. The sheetrock wall, so. Now I will come back and I will tack that wire down and I should be good to go. Great, worked like a charm. So hey, that's really all I had for you today. Um, the simple little task of replacing that little um, button to open and close my garage door. It's a real inconvenience having to walk up there and close the garage door because there's been several occasions when, you know, I'm an old guy, I forget. I walked up to the house and uh, I just forgot to grab the remote and close the garage door. And the very next day I went out to get into the car and I looked outside and my garage door was open. And I've got, you know, a few things in here that I would hate to lose by leaving my garage door open and exposed to somebody just walking in. So um, I really appreciate you stopping by. Um, again, I know this wasn't a real a uh, technical video, um, but you know, sometimes the simple things, some people just don't know or don't understand. So uh, in case there's somebody out there that didn't quite get that, I wanted to make sure I, you know, gave that opportunity to put that out there for uh, someone to see. So thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, I hope you like and subscribe and continue uh, watching. I'm gonna have some more videos on cooking. Um, it's been a crazy summer. It's been so much going on. I really haven't had much time to show any of that. As a matter of fact, we've hardly used our deck this summer. It's just uh, the weather has just been lots of excuses. But I am going to put some videos out here over the course of the next few weeks showing some re new recipes that I have. So look forward to that. Uh, I'm going to transition to the faith portion of my video now. I hope you'll stay for that as well. Thank you so much for showing up. I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget God loves you so very much and so do I. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Hello everyone, welcome back to Faith Changes Everything. I'm Richard and I hope you're having a really, really blessed day today. Uh, today's the beginning of um, something special and I'm, I'm so excited for this message because uh, there's some special things happening. If you saw my last message, you know I'm making a bit of a transition here because, well, I mean, I want to start making a real commitment to God to trust in Him to use this channel to bring people to Christ. and. I want to do that, but in order to start, I need to talk about something here, something I've not really talked about before, and it's really shameful uh, in a way that I have not, because ultimately, um, these are the reasons any of us who want to spread the Word of God, this is why we do what we do. I want to talk to you about salvation, what it is, and how you get it. Um, like everything else about God, it's really not that difficult. I want you to know that the God of the universe loves you and that he wants to set you free. And I believe deep in the core of your being, you want to be set free as well. That is what your salvation is, a bridge to your freedom from anxiety and worry. Maybe you want to be set free from other people's expectations so you don't feel that pressure to continue to perform and pretend. Um, maybe you want to be set free from, I don't know, your past mistakes and failures. Maybe you even want to be set free from religious rules and regulations. And so the question becomes, how are you going to be set free? 
How do you cross that bridge that God offers to gain salvation everlasting, to give you everlasting life, a chance to find fulfillment and release from the pressures of this life and, the, and release the love that God has put in each of us for one another? Well, the first thing you need to do, quite simply, you just have to admit that you're not free, that you're pursuing something in this life thinking that it'll bring ultimate joy or, or meaning or satisfaction or maybe even an identity. <clears throat> the Bible tells us that anytime we pursue something more than God, even good things like a career or family or, or marriage or just being a good parent or getting good grades, whatever it is, when we pursue that, we, perf- we put that pursuit in front of God and that's a sin. 1 John verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life come not from the Father, but from the world. That might be hard for some people to accept, but the reality is the Bible tells us that we, when we put anything before Him, we become a slave to that thing. And that being a slave to anything is sinful in its nature. When we pursue something other than God, we get stuck, we get trapped, and all of those roads only lead to one place. They lead to death. The only way that a slave is actually going to be set free is if a ransom is paid. So the second thing we need to do is actually believe and trust that Jesus Christ has paid the ransom so that you might be liberated, that you might be set free. The bridge is open for, for your crossing. In fact, Jesus says in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. For many, this means that Jesus didn't come with his own agenda. He came actually to serve you that he lived a life of 100% devotion to God, and then he was literally stripped of all of his freedom, and he was nailed to a Roman cross to die the death that you deserve. And he did this so that you might actually be liberated. He did this to pay the ransom. So if you hear these words, and you're like, I want that. I want that for my life. I want to experience that freedom. It's as simple as responding to God, and the best way to do that is through prayer. You can simply go to God and pray and admit that you've been pursuing a life on your own, a life apart from God. Confess that to Him. Tell Him you're sorry for that. And then believe in and trust that Jesus has died His death to pay for your sin and that Jesus died to be the ransom and say, I trust in that and I want to follow you. Don't be afraid of not being worthy. None of us are worthy. Each of us have had the price paid for our sin by Jesus on the cross. God is not mad at you. He isn't counting your sins and holding them against you. He wants so much to have a personal relationship with you. That's why He sent His Son in your place, so you can come to Him and be cleansed of your sin to stand before Him worthy of eternal life. Jesus died on the cross, shed His blood, and then was raised from the dead. He did all of that so that you can be set free from the bondage of sin and the fear of death and enter an eternal life by the ransom he paid, to be with his Father in heaven, where he wants all of us to be for all of eternity. Do you feel this need? Accepting Jesus Christ is very simple. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, that means you. Say with our mouths. Romans verse 9 and 10 also tells us, That if we say with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Listen to me. It's that easy. Believe it, confess it, and be saved. So if you're ready to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I invite you right now to say this prayer with me. Out loud, confess with your mouth, and pray these words. Dear God, I want to be part of your family. You said in your word that if I acknowledge that you raised Jesus from the dead, and that I accept him as my Lord and Savior, I would be saved. So 
So God, I now say that I believe you raised Jesus from the dead. And that he is alive and well. I accept him now as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept my salvation from sin right now. Thank you, Jesus, for I am now saved. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving me, saving me, and giving me eternal life with you. Amen. If you just prayed this prayer for the first time, I welcome you to the family of God. I would love to pray for you and provide you with resources to help you in your walk with God. You can reach out to me and I'll do all that I can for you. But more than that, I encourage you to get into a church, become a steward of his word, learn his teachings. Don't stop now. Learn to yearn for him, to take guidance and control of your life. Offer yourself to him and let him direct your every step. Stay in prayer with Him, learn to rely on Him, not your own understanding, and continue your journey with Christ and with His people in a church and Bible study. <clears throat> I am so thankful to have this opportunity to pour out His Word and to show you that you can be released from bondage of life and that there's hope for you, and that if you've prayed this simple prayer, that you too have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for watching today. We will end every video going forward with this prayer in hopes of building a worship for Him. And remember, God loves you so very much, and so do I. Until next time.